As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Well, it is pretty unbelievable what we do to make interesting stand-ups for you. And today I'm in the middle of these grangy looking sheep. It makes me think about me because I'm a sheep, you're a sheep, but Jesus loves us. And he loves us so much, he wants to restore our soul. And that's what the Bible tells us in the 23rd Psalm, verse three, he restoreth my soul. If you feel your soul needs restoration, well, good news, the Lord is your shepherd and he wants to restore your soul. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. I'm so glad that you've let me come right into your space. And today I'm going to talk to you about Jesus' amazing ability to restore our souls. Most of us carry some kind of wounds from our past and we need our souls to be restored. And the good news is Jesus is a restorer of souls. So many people reach out to our ministry asking for help because they're struggling, because they've been hurt in life. People feel abused, people feel neglected, people have been insulted, people have been hurt, and people are really crying out for God to heal their souls. Well, in the 23rd Psalm, we find that Jesus is the one who restores our soul, and that is what I'm going to talk to you about today. But hey, I want you to order the entire series, which is the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is My Shepherd. How did you like that stand-up with me among all those sheep? That was a blast. But when I was sitting among all those sheep, I was thinking about us being sheep and the Lord being our shepherd. That is who He is. And I want you to order this 10-part series which comes in multiple formats with a study guide. The study guide is so powerful. When you read it, while you see it or hear it, it really reinforces the teaching that you're seeing or that you're listening to. You really get it down deep inside you. So please order yours right now by going online or give us a call at Renner Ministries. And we're also offering you right now the book by my dear friend, Tony Cook, the book is called Because the Lord is My Shepherd, and it lists the blessings of an empowered life. This book may look small. This book is powerful. So order yours right now by going online or give us a call. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we will immediately send you two books as our way of saying, welcome to our partner family. We always send these two books to anyone who becomes a partner with our ministry. Partners are so important because they enable us to take the teaching of the Bible to the ends of the earth. And dear partner, I want you to know you're really making a difference in other people's lives. Don't let the devil tell you that what you do is unimportant. What you do is very, very important. Right from the privacy of your home, right from where you are, by going online or by making a contribution or calling us, you literally transform someone else's life because you're empowering the Word of God to go into their lives. I want to say thank you for that. And if you're not a partner today, it would be a great day to become a partner with our ministry. We'll just pray for you and embrace you and send you these two books, Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness, and my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to our partners. And I want to remind you that from now until October 1st, at a radical, radical discount on our website store, we're offering our new autobiography called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And there's a picture of me and Denise on Red Square. The back of the book says, if you're ready to read a true life story that will stir your faith to launch out and experience your own unlikely adventure, this is the book for you to read. And my friend, it would be an awesome gift to give to anybody who's just getting started in life and who's dreaming about their future. God chooses unlikely people and uses them for His glory. 
And that's why we call the autobiography Unlikely. Order yours today. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we are going to return to the 23rd Psalm. We always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to begin in Psalm 23, verse 1, where David writes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Verse 3, He restoreth my soul. That's what we're going to see today. But verse 23 goes on to say, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. That's what we're going to see tomorrow, how He leads us. But in verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me, Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And in the 23rd Psalm, we find 10 promises that the great shepherd makes to all of his sheep. That's to me and that's to you. The 10 promises are number one, God's supernatural provision. Number two, God's supernatural protection. Number three, God's supernatural peace. Number four, God's supernatural restoration. We're going to see that today. Number five, God's supernatural guidance in our lives. Number six, God's supernatural confidence that He gives to us. Number seven, God's supernatural loving correction. Number eight, God's supernatural prosperity. Number nine, God's supernatural anointing. And finally, number 10, God's supernatural promise. Ten promises that God makes to each one of us. But today, we're going to look at number four which is God's supernatural promise of restoration, restoration. And in Psalm 23, verse 3, David writes, He restores my soul. It brings my mind to Jeremiah chapter 10, chapter 30, verse 17, where the Bible says, For I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. The Lord restores our body, and the Lord restores our souls. So many times our souls carry scars from the past, but in Jeremiah 30, verse 17, it is promised, I will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. And that even includes the wounds that you carry in your soul. The truth is the world can be a very tough place to live in, and people become injured and hurt as they live life, but Jesus heals and Jesus restores because it is the nature of God to restore. But today I want to give you a testimony about a restoration project that we experienced in our life. Many, many years ago, when we lived in Riga, in the early years when we first moved to the former Soviet Union, we purchased an apartment in downtown Riga in an area that had formerly been a very prestigious area. But after 55 years of communism, the whole area had become dilapidated. The apartment that we purchased was built in 1898 and it had 13 rooms and seven fireplaces. When it was first built, it was magnificent. But when we found the apartment much, much later, it was in a total state of dilapidation. The ceilings were crumbling, the walls were crumbling, mold actually covered the walls, and the windows were broken out. It was just in a horrible state, horrible. Unbelievable that anybody could even live there, but eight families had been living in that mess. Maybe you remember the old film, Dr. Zhivago. Well, in that film, Dr. Zhivago comes home to his apartment in Moscow after communism comes to power, and he finds that his luxurious apartment has been subdivided, and now it is occupied by multiple families. That's not just a fairy tale. That really happened, and that's what happened to that fabulous apartment that we purchased in Riga. Eight families now occupied that apartment. It had one kitchen and one bathroom. Imagine eight families trying to use one kitchen and one bathroom, and the condition of the apartment was just horrific. In fact, the first time that Denise saw it, she said, Honey, I don't know if there's any hope of restoration in this place. 
But when I walked through those rooms, I could see a hint of former glory. I looked at the moldings which around, went around the top of each of the room. They were so intricate. In fact, they were massive. They were magnificent moldings that were covered with 55 years of Soviet paint. It was difficult to see the molding, but it was there. Beautiful medallions in the center of the ceilings in every room where chandeliers had once hung. And the, four, the parquet floors were made of beautiful woods that were scraped and painted over. And again, the walls were crumbling, the windows were broken, and they had so missed the toilet for 55 years that the urine <laughs> had eaten a hole all the way through the floor next to the toilet, and you could stand next to the toilet and look at the apartment below. That was the condition of that apartment when we first found it. I remember one day I was walking through that apartment so devastated, and it had formerly been so magnificent. And my mind went to John 10.10, 10, where Jesus says, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But then he adds, I am come, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The RIV of John 10.10 10 says, The thief wants to get his hands into every good thing in your life. In fact, this pickpocket is looking for any opportunity to wiggle his way so deeply into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. And that's not all. When he's finished stealing all your goods and possessions, he'll take his plan to rob you blind to the next level by creating conditions and situations so horrible that you'll see no way to solve problems except to sacrifice everything that remains from his previous attacks. The goal of this thief is to totally devastate your life. And if nothing stops him, he'll leave you insolvent, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. You'll end up feeling as if you're finished and out of business. Make no mistake. The enemy's ultimate aim is to obliterate you. But then Jesus adds, but I have specifically come with the express purpose that you will have, hold, and possess a phenomenal and amazing life. My purpose is that you will possess life so full that it overflows and spills over like a mighty river, so full of water that its banks can no longer contain at all. I'm talking about an amazing, full, spirited, vivacious life that is literally overflowing and spilling over. I have explicitly come so you can possess an abundant, profuse, plentiful and bountiful life. Look what the devil does, but look what happens when Jesus gets involved. My friends, Jesus has the power to redeem and to restore, and the Lord is the one who restores our soul. But let me go back to my apartment for a moment. We begin to peel off 55 years of Soviet wallpaper. 55 years. Finally, we got down to the very bottom layer, and you'll be amazed at what we found. We found the walls were covered with Yiddish newspapers, which is a form of Hebrew, and we discovered the apartment had originally been owned by a Jew who had been killed in the Latvian Holocaust. But we began to peel off all that wallpaper. We brought in a gentleman who began to restore all the molding. And the molding was so intricate, but so covered with 55 years of horrible paint, he had to use dental instruments to clean all that blotched paint out of all of that molding. And by the time that we were finished, we had an apartment that was simply magnificent. It was magnificent because we were willing to accept the challenge to restore the property we were rewarded was something glorious and something amazing that had formerly been ravaged, wasted, and devastated. Now, why did I tell you all of that? Because Jesus is the one who restores our souls. And some of our souls have been pretty devastated. We need a restorative work in our souls, and He is the one that restores our souls. Jesus Himself, who is the Great Shepherd, said in Luke 19, verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The word lost 
is a Greek word derived from the word apolumi, and it conveys the idea, listen, of something ruined, wasted, trashed, devastated, or destroyed, which means the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was, are you ready? Ruined, wasted, trashed, devastated, or destroyed. But what does the Bible mean when it says he came to save it? The word save is a translation of the wonderful Greek word sozo, which implies a rescue operation, a rescue operation, such as a rescue from a raging sea, rescue from an illness, rescue from immediate danger. And inherent in this kind of rescue is one's return to safety and soundness. This is not just a salvage operation. It is a full-scale rescue that results in a redemptive, fully restorative operation, puts everything back in shape, puts everything back in order. In fact, the end product is better than the product was when it first began. Which means when Jesus finishes his work in us, we are not a second rate version of something we used to be. We may be different than we used to be, but in Christ, my friends, we're never second to what we used to be. In fact, in Christ, we are an improved version of what we used to be. Say amen. Listen to this. We are not a weaker, substandard version of what we were before. Now in Christ, we are stronger, we are better, we are improved because the Lord has restored us. You know, I never saw the original apartment that was built in 1898. I'm sure that when it was first built, it was magnificent. But if the owners had seen it by the time that we were finished, I think they would have seen, said the latter glory was greater than the earlier glory because what we did to those ceilings, to that molding, to those apartments, to those parquet floors was simply magnificent. It became a treasure because we put forth the work, the effort, and the time to restore it. And the good news is, oh, with faith, with prayer, and with the help of others, Jesus can perform a full rescue and restorative operation in our souls. He's seeking to do it, not only in you, but also in those that are around you. Don't give up in those that are around you because rescue operations are Jesus' specialty. Say amen. Wow. But in Isaiah 57, verse 15, the New Living Translation says, the high and lofty one who lives in eternity, the holy one says, this. I live in the high and holy place with those whose spirits are contrite and humble. Listen, I restore. I restore the crushed spirit of the humble and revive the courage of those with repentant hearts. Even from God's high and lofty place, he's looking for those whom he can restore because it is the nature of God to redeem and to restore. And Jesus himself, who is the great shepherd, said these words in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. That word brokenhearted is the Greek word soon trebo, which is used technically to describe the crushing of grapes with the feet or the smashing of grinding of bones into dust. Or it can be used to describe people who've been walked on by others, those who have been crushed by others, or those who feel they've been smashed to piece, pieces by life or by relationships, but Jesus came to heal them. He is in the restorative business. It says he came to preach deliverance to the captives. The word deliverance, the Greek word ephiemia, describes a permanent release. Jesus wants to permanently set captives free. The word captives is a Greek word which describes those that are held in bondages and in addictions. He came to give recovering of sight to the blind. The word recovering means Jesus wants to give your sight back to you again. The word blind depicts those who are unable to see because 
They have been intentionally blinded by somebody else. It pictures one whose eyes have been removed so that he is blinded. This individual hasn't just lost his sight, he has no eyes to see. And sometimes people have been blinded in life, but Jesus gives their sight back to them again. And finally, Jesus said, I came to set at liberty them that have been bruised. The word bruised is a Greek word, which means those that have been crushed, those that have been broken. It depicts a person who has been shattered or fractured by life. It pictures those whose lives have been continually split up and fragmented, and Jesus came to set them at liberty, which is again is the Greek word aphiemi, which depicts a permanent release, a permanent dismissal, a permanent loosing, to permanently set one free. And in this case, it pictures one being set free from the detrimental effects of a shattered life. And the Greek emphatically speaks of a permanent release from the destructive effects of brokenness. Wow. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, He maketh me to lie down in grief pastures and leads me beside the still waters. Verse 3, He restores my soul. And if you feel that you are brokenhearted, if you feel that you've been taken captive by some addiction or some relationship in life, if you feel that you're a person being manipulated by your emotions, if you feel that you've been shattered and you've been blindsided in life, Jesus has the ability to fully restore your soul. He is your shepherd, you're his sheep, and this verse promises that he is the one who restores my soul. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. The 23rd Psalm is a favorite passage of Scripture for many people and cherished by Christians all over the world. In this new 10-part series, Psalm 23, The Lord is My Shepherd, Rick Renner opens this powerful passage like you've never heard it before, so you can understand all the amazing promises that God makes to you in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord really is your shepherd, and He wants to lovingly take care of you. In this 10-part series, Rick will unfold for you God's provision and protection, God's peace and restoration, God's guidance and prosperity, God's anointing and promises, and so much more. Rick Renner says, this is one of my favorite series. Anyone who loves Psalm 23 will love it more than ever after hearing this fully expounded teaching. This remarkable series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we're also offering you the book Because the Lord is My Shepherd, the 12 blessings of an empowered life. God wants you to experience all the promises in His Word. And in this easy to read book, you'll find 12 blessings that God promises you in the 23rd Psalm. This powerful book can be yours for just $7. Don't miss this special offer of the 10 part series, Psalm 23, The Lord is My Shepherd, and the book, Because the Lord is My Shepherd, The 12 Blessings of an Empowered Life. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friend, this is Rick Renner. I wanna take just a moment to tell you about what God is doing in our ministry. We are bursting at the seams with response from people and it's coming from all over the world, from the English speaking world, from the Russian speaking world. People are reaching out to us for prayer, for support, and for resources, and we need more space. It's not about buildings. It's never about buildings. Really, it's about having space so we can adequately minister to the needs of the people that are reaching out to us. And in Tulsa, we have to have a new ministry home. We've totally outgrown our current facility, and God has led us to another building. And guess what? It is fully furnished. All we have to do is purchase it and move in and we can immediately begin to operate. Wow, that is just like something the Lord would do. At the same time in Moscow, we're constructing a new studio because this studio is too small. We are producing five to seven daily television programs and we have maximized this space. And now we need to construct this new TV studio, which is already under construction. And in that studio, we're going to produce programming that's going to bring glory and honor to the name of Jesus and to the Word of God. And our assignment is to bring teaching that people can trust to them all over the planet, particularly 
to English speakers and to Russian speakers. But if you put together all the space we need to expand, we need about 50,000 square feet. And that's what it comes to, the building in Tulsa, the studio which we're constructing in Moscow, and we can do all of it for $120 a square foot. That is a remarkable price when you consider it includes the architectural plans, the property, the building, the furnishings, the TV equipments, the light, everything that is needed for us to do this ministry. And I'm asking you today to please pray about joining us to help us do this. Would you be a part of the giving team that gives sacrificially to help us really knock this out of the ballpark, to win the victory, to purchase the building in Tulsa, to finish constructing the studio in Moscow? You know, if we have to do it by ourselves, it's gonna to be tough, but if many people will join hands with us together, we can do this, we can do it quickly, and Jesus will give us the victory. Many years ago, when Denise and I first began our ministry, the Lord gave us Romans chapter 10, verse 18, and it says, Yea, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. It is amazing that we're watching this ministry really reach people at the very ends of the earth. And when you partner with us, you help us do this job. And together, we can purchase this building in Tulsa, construct the studio in Moscow, and produce programming, and bring teaching of the Bible that people can trust to people all over the planet. And my friend, please join us. Ask the Holy Spirit what He would have you to do and what He would have you to do regularly until we finally achieve this victory. And I wanna say thank you in advance. When we come back tomorrow, we're going to see in Psalm 23, verse 3, the shepherd promises that he will lead us. Oh, it's going to be so powerful. But today we've seen he is the one that restores our soul. And I'm going to pray for your soul restoration in just a moment. But I want to remind you to order the series called Psalm 23rd, the Lord is my shepherd, which comes with the study guide. And please also order the book by Tony Cook, which is called Because the Lord is my shepherd, the 12 blessings of an empowered life. And remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we will send you Denise's book, The Gift of Forgiveness. We'll send you my book, Life in the Combat Zone. These books are always given to those who become partners with our ministry. And let me remind you that from now, until October, we're offering our brand new autobiography at a radical discount on our website store. Please go there, order it right now, or give us a call. It's called Unlikely, Our Faith-Filled Journey to the Ends of the Earth. And please remember that if you need prayer, ring that phone or send us an email. We're waiting to hear from you so we can put our faith together with you. But I wanna pray for you right now. Lord, I thank you that you are the one who heals our soul. And it doesn't matter what happened to us in the past, you want to do a work in us that makes us better and greater and more glorious than we ever were in the beginning. I thank you that you came to seek and to save that which was lost. That includes every one of us, every area of our mind and of our emotions, anything that's been wasted or devastated or attacked by the enemy, you come to bring restoration to it. And I thank you that you are the one who really restores our souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, but remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.